Hi there! You are watching a video of above ground storage tanks in industrial plants. The shell is the largest and most critical component of storage tanks, representing approximately 60% of the total material used. The tank shell, or tank wall, is built from standard plates, with standard width and length according to the origin of the material. The layout of the plate follows such arrangement where vertical welded joints are out of phase, rotated at a certain angle in order to avoid stress concentration. The loading acting upon the tank shell in storage tanks and defining the thickness of this element is the hydrostatic pressure of the fluid. In other words, the maximum liquid level during normal operation and the static head of the hydrostatic test. There are different methods accepted by the API 650 standard to determine the thickness of tank shells. Next, we will review the different considerations to bear in mind to calculate this element. It is clear to observe that the hydrostatic pressure will be maximum at the bottom of the tank due to higher static head. Therefore, the bottom shell cores will require a thicker plate, decreasing moving upwards in the tank shell. Circumferential stresses induced in the tank shell due to the hydrostatic pressure are not linear mainly due to the presence of welded joints having higher allowable stresses than plates. Consequently, the stresses in one shell course is not linear either, having its maximum value at a certain height. In order to establish the tank shell thickness, the different calculation methods define the height at which the maximum stresses are located in every shell course stresses that must be lower than the allowables. There are three methods to determine the tank shell thickness accepted by the storage tanks standard API 650. These are the one foot method, the variable design point method and the elastic analysis, in other words finite element analysis. From all these three methods, we will study the one-foot method in this module. From all three methods aforementioned, the one-foot method is most widely used, mainly due to its simplicity and due to the fact that the results are in the safe side. This method determines the shell thickness considering that the design point for each course maximum stress point is located at 1 foot 304.8 mm above the base of the shell course. This simplification in the calculation process is on the safe side. The 1 foot method cannot be used for tanks with diameters larger than 61 meters. The tank shell thickness calculation, according to the one-foot method, compares two loads combinations, normal operation loads and hydrostatic test loads. The bigger value of these two aforementioned will be adopted for the tank shell thickness. This thickness is a function of the mean diameter of the tank the liquid level, the specific density of the fluid, the corrosion allowance, if required, and the allowable stress. To ensure that a storage tank meets the design requirements, it is necessary to follow certain aspects during the fabrication of the tank. For an adequate tank fabrication, Plates with prepared edges must be used according to the type of welding to be made. Plates should not be welded as they come from the rolling process, as this could lead to problems due to incomplete fusion of the weld. 
The API 650 code establishes the allowable dimensional tolerances for the plates that will be used for the tank shell, being plus minus 1.6 mm for the tank length and width of the sheets. In this same line, for the cylindrical deviation of the tank, the code establishes the tolerances shown on the screen, in diameter and radius. As usual, in welded fabricated mechanical equipment and also for storage tanks, welded joints represent a critical aspect. Shell plates will be joined by means of butt welding. They must be presented and kept in position throughout the process. Misalignments in large tanks are very frequent, so tolerances of the sheets should be controlled as much as possible. So, if welded joints are critical for the structural stability of the tank, why aren't equations accounting for efficiency, reliability of the welded joints? For storage tanks, the joint efficiency doesn't adopt a specific value as in the case of pressure vessels. As long as the results of non-destructive examinations required by the API 650 standard are met, joint efficiencies are considered one. Non-destructive examination requirements to determine the reliability of the welded joints are included in the API 650 standard. Taking into account that requirements are many and very specific, the API 650 standard must be consulted in this regard prior to any development. The hydrostatic test is carried out to check the tightness of the welded joints. The test is carried out in accordance with section 735 of the API 650 code. The following considerations must be met. The test is going to be performed once the fabrication is completed. The filling must be gradual, not to overstress the shell. No elements should be welded after the test. Anti-filling and unloading speeds must be controlled. Also, foundation settlements may occur due to the large weights that the tank it is transmitting to the foundation. If water is available, the tank will be filled to the design height, H. If there is no water available, the tank can be tested by painting all the joints on the inside with highly penetrating oil and examining them on the outside carefully, as long as this procedure is accepted by the end user. 